Today we're going to look at the reaction quotient, which is called Q, and we're going to look at how the reaction quotient is related to equilibrium and how we can use it to determine which direction an e, uh, a system is going to proceed or shift. Um, it's very, very similar to KEQ or K. Uh, it's if you have the same AA plus BB yields CC plus DD for a reversible reaction. Rather than necessarily being at equilibrium, the reaction quotient, or Q, is what are the concentrations right now? They may or may not match equilibrium. If the Q value is less than K, the system is not currently at equilibrium. You reactants will be changing into products, or the forward reaction will be increased in order to make Q equals K. If the two values are the same, if Q does equal K, then it's already at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, then you'll have the reverse occurring, products changing into reactants in order to achieve equilibrium. So what we use this for is predicting what's going to happen under different various conditions. So for the synthesis of ammonia at 500 degrees C, the equilibrium constant is given to us. Predict the direction in which the system will shift to reach equilibrium in each of the following cases. So first thing that we need is we need an equation. Synthesis of ammonia is nitrogen plus 3 hydrogen yields 2NH3, which means our K expression is NH3, and they're all gases, squared over... N2 times H2 cubed. So we have three different sets of concentrations here, and we're going to compare the values of those concentrations with the given K and see what happens with these. So for the first one, we're going to start off calling it Q. The NH3 concentration, 1 times 10 to the negative third squared over N2, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth, times H2, 2 times 10 to the negative third, and that is cubed. Then I'm going to use my handy dandy calculator and plug in the values. Make sure you watch out for all of your... Um, parentheses and various things that you'll need to be using. Okay. And from that value I get 1.25 times 10 to the seventh. So that value then has to be compared with the Q value, which is 6.0, or sorry, the K value, which is 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. So in this case, Q is much greater than K. This suggests that the reaction will shift toward the products, or sorry, the reactants shift to reactants, or more reactants will form. We'll do the same setup for the other two scenarios. Then you can plug them into your calculator. And see what you get. 
Okay, and the answer to that part is 0 0.06. So again, if we compare with K, Q, and K, 0 0.06 is the same thing as 6 times 10 to the negative 2. So in this case, Q and K are equal. So this system is at equilibrium. And then finally, we'll set up the last set of expressions. You can go ahead without me if you know what you're doing. I get 0 0.002, comparing that with K, 0 0.002 is less than K, so the system is not at equilibrium. It needs to shift to the right or shift to the products in order to make some more.